Hi everyone and welcome to this last tutorial of 2023. In this video, I will show you how we can make an inventory item we've picked up return to the slot it came from when we right click on the mouse. And now let's get started. Okay, so we've been doing a lot of work on our inventory. We can collect items, they can stack and we can click and move them around. If you need help doing any of this, then I suggest you take a look at my inventory playlist here on YouTube. But as the final thing for now, we will also make it so an item we've picked up can return to the slot it came from automatically when we right click on the mouse. The first thing we need for this is to set up a new input action. So let's go to the project settings input map and then add a new action called right click and then add the right mouse button event to it. Now we need to check if this action is pressed. We can do this in the Godot input function. If you followed my inventory tutorials so far, you will already have added this earlier when we started to move things around in the inventory. It's only relevant to check for right clicks if we have an item in the hand. So let's add a new if statement at the top of the input function that first checks if we have an item in hand and then checks if the right click action is pressed. Okay, so we want to be able to put the item back to its previous slot. So let's create a new put item back function. And then we call this function down in the input function inside the new if statement we just added. Now our new put item back function should be called when we have an item in hand and right click on the mouse. Let's add a pass to this function for now and insert a breakpoint here. And then we test to see if the setup is working. Now pick up an item if you haven't got any in the player inventory from the start. Then click on it in the inventory, move it a bit and then right click. If everything is working as expected, the program should now break in our new put item back function. Now we need to put the item back, but to do this, we first need to figure out where it came from. The easiest way to do this is just to add a variable at the top of our script that can keep track of the index of the slot the item in hand came from. I'm setting this to minus one as a start. And then we need to find where we pick up an item and update this new variable correctly. So in the take item from slot function, we update this new variable to be the index of the slot the item came from. We are of course also picking up an item in the swap function, but in this case, we already know that a new item was placed in the slot. So the slot isn't available anymore, which is why I won't update the old index here. We also need to find the places where we remove the item in hand and then set the old index to minus one here. This is in the insert item in slot function. And when we join items in the stack items function. Okay, so now we should be ready to put our item back into its old slot when we right click. But remember that in some cases, the old slot will be occupied by a new item. So in the put item back function, we first check if the old index is less than zero. If this is the case, then we don't have a slot to place the item in hand in yet. What we need here 
is a way to find the first empty slot available. To do this, we first use the arrays filter function to find the slots from the slots array that are empty. If the returning array is empty, then no slots are empty and we just return. Otherwise, we set the old index to be the index of the first empty slot. Now we know that the old index variable holds the index of an empty slot. So we use this to get the empty slot. And then use the insert item in slot function to insert the item in hand into it. Let's test and see what happens. Remember, we have two test cases. First, we pick up an item and right click right away. This returns the item to the slot it came from. Next, we need to pick up an item and swap it with another item. And then we right click and the item in hand should be inserted into the first empty slot there is. This all works very well. However, it would probably be a bit more fun if the item isn't moved instantly into the slot. We want to see it slide into its old slot instead. This is something a tween is perfect for. Tweens are really useful for animations where you don't know the value you animate between in advance. Like in our case, where we want to animate an item stack GUI moving to a slot, but we don't know where it's moved from or to before running the game. You can read more about tweens in the Godot documentation. I've left a link in the description to where you can read more about them. First, we create a new tween. We can do this from the tree or a specific node. Here we do it from the inventory node we're in, so we're sure it updates even when we pause the game outside the inventory. And now we need to figure out what position we want to move the item in hand to. We need this to be the middle of the slot we want to insert it in. So we set the target position to be the position of the target slot plus half the size of the slot. And finally, we use the tween property function to set up the tween. Here, we first specify the object we want to animate using the tween. This is the item in hand. And then we tell it what property of that object we want it to change. In our case, this is the position. Then we specify the value we want the property to have once the tween is finished. This is our target position. And finally, we tell it how long the tween animation should take. I'm just setting it to 0.2 here. But feel free to play around with this value to see what fits your game the best. If we test now, it might seem like we haven't actually done anything and that the tween isn't running. However, this is just because we call the insert item in slot function right after we create the tween, so the item is instantly put in the slot. What we need to do is wait for the tween to end before we insert the item in hand into the target slot. We can just use an await for this. So we await tween finished and then insert the item in the slot. Ok, let's test again and see how it all works. Wow, this looks really good! Remember to tweak the duration of the tween until you find something you like. But we still have a little problem. Try to test what happens if you click and pick up an item 
then move it really far away and right click. And before it can get to its old slot, we click on another slot. Either an empty slot or one with an item in it. You might need to increase the duration of the tween a bit to test this. Okay, so we definitely don't want the player to be able to click on any of the slots while an item is being returned. The easiest way to fix this problem is to lock the inventory while an item is being returned. As long as the duration of our tween animation isn't too long, this should be fine for the player. To lock the inventory, we can use a new boolean variable. I'm calling mine locked and set it to false at first. We can then lock the inventory by setting this variable to true at the beginning of the put item back function. And then set it back to false at the end. Now, for this to work, we need to check the state of this locked variable at the top of our onslot clicked function and return if it's true. This way, we can't do anything with the slots while locked is false. Now, let's test again and see how this works. And that was all for this episode. This was also the last episode in this inventory series, and the final episode in my Action RPG series. But don't worry, I will be back in the new year with a lot of new content that I'm sure you will find helpful, including new things you can add if you're making an Action RPG or something similar. I'll just be changing the overall format for the channel a bit, but more on that in the new year. If you like this video and want to see more like this, then please like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that. Bye!